Hey, what is up everyone? It is Rich. Hello, hello. All right, welcome to our afternoon hang. <laughs> All right, so this is Quipel part two. I was very, very disappointed in that first video. Um, like I said, I finished recording an excellent first take which is generally all, all the takes that I do, and oh, it was not recording, and I was so bummed because it was just, I always do it best the first time, and uh, going back and trying to re-record one immediately is tough. Anyway, so yeah, we're going to look at more Koypel. Let's go into full screen mode, or as we like to call it, Carlos mode, uh, since he recommended it, <laughs> and uh, boom. All right, so we've got a beautiful Koypel Wolverine, uh, probably a commission of some sort, and it is nice. It's got all the, uh, I mentioned Travis in the last video, Travis Charay, for people that don't know. I saw that someone replied for me, but uh, yeah, that's the Travis I'm referring to. And Koipel definitely took a shine to Travis's work, and uh, to his benefit, it made his work look great. So he had already looked great, and now he looks great. <laughs> And uh, I got a nice email from David Williams, who's a fantastic artist, and uh, he said that he's enjoying the videos. So uh, let's all get together for the coronavirus jam. All right. This is a small scan of this, but this is a great little Wolverine drawing. Man, it's just powerful. The bike looks great. Wolvie looks great. And uh, I ain't mad at it. I like, uh, again, he gets that real gritty line. When he doesn't want to render stuff, he'll do this dry brush effect. And it's very, very um, effective for creating value um, in an area without really having to spend a lot of time on it. Up here, it's a little difficult to tell in the scan. I'm going to guess that probably some of this is hatched. And I know up there it is. And this is hatched. But uh, his gloves look like it might be a little bit more of the dry brush. And there could be some line work down there. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a very, very clever way to expedite um, having to spend forever and a desay on things. Okay, so we looked at this page uh, in the other one. And it was actually RBG scan, so we can skip that. I grabbed a few. Um, okay, this isn't such a huge scan. Um, so this is Mark Morales inks. And uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to go too big on it. It looks nice. I mean, I'm just so used to what Quaypel does now that um, uh, seeing someone else ink him, uh, it still looks very nice, but uh, I definitely uh, uh, um, sort of uh, seem to lean more towards Quaypel inking himself. But this is excellent. There's no two ways about it. It looks great. So, you know, and it, 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 inkers are in, at a weird disadvantage because generally what you'll see is inkers will ink people's stuff a little neater. Um, which is kind of what you're sort of like expected to do. You know, you take rough stuff and sort of define it and refine it. And uh, when a penciler inks themselves, they can kind of do whatever they want. Not kind of, they, they can. And uh, it can sometimes make it look like, oh, the, the, the inks are too clean. And I've seen that in other cases. This is a little sketch. Again, you can see how Travisy this is. I mean, I mentioned that when he got into Travis's stuff, it literally affected everything that he did, from con convention sketches, headshots. I mean, it, it's all over his stuff. Um, and and he's not the only one. Steve McNiven definitely did it. Jimmy Chung, um, I think uh, Simone Bianchi. Although Bianchi has always kind of still had his own thing. Granov, Adi Granov. I mean, there's like. Pretty much the top guys at Marvel all just went like bananas for Travis, in my opinion. And I'm not saying the stuff that I did with Travis, they were they were probably into the stuff that he did before. X-Men Wildcats, of course, was such a high watermark, but this is fantastic. I wish the scan was a little bigger. Um, I still can't find all of my Koi Pell. I know I have more, and um, I think that they're so deep in folders that when I search for it, they're not coming up. I found that that is a problem is I have so many um, backups and the folders go deeper and deeper on the external hard drives and it will only search so deep effectively. So I've been trying to move everything forward and not have it like 25 folders in. <laughs> this is great. Oh man, it's such a bummer that these aren't bigger scans. I kind of thought that they were. This stuff is probably all off of Quan Chang's site. And we're going to have some pencils coming up, too. This is a great, great piece. Um, lots of cute girls. Detail. And uh, it's just nice. Really, really nicely laid out. Um, this is cool. Dang, it's such a bummer that these aren't bigger files. 
we were a little spoiled with the last video, but you take what you get and you don't throw a fit. <laughs> get what you get. It's nice. Great space. And this is probably Morales. It's not signed up here, but I would guess it is. But yeah, this looks very, very nice. I'm sure he's got a great uh, Koi Po collection, unless he sold it all. But uh, oh, this is so nice. Yeah, this looks really, really cool. Yeah, really, really nice. So cool. I love Galactus and Silver Surfer, man. That is a great like panel right there. People always seem to have fun with those characters. Okay, here's Koi Po stuff on, on his own. And it's a bigger scan, too. I think part of what it might have been is Quan might have sent these to me directly. And they might be a little bigger, and that's why. But you can see this beautiful br like dry brush effect that he gets. Um, even in here. It looks great. Like The hatching really looks cool. And again, he's so brave with this like blue line everywhere. And I still see two... I see two hues of blue. I see that darker one and then the lighter one. It could be his touch. I kind of don't think it is, though. This looks too cyan. And then this looks more like a royal blue or something. Yeah, these are big scans. These must have been from Quan directly. And I noticed that they weren't watermarked, too. He watermarks the stuff he puts on the site. So these might have been sent... We have a little like, email group. It's like five of us that talk about our top secret stuff. <laughs> our takeover. <laughs> His Spider-Man, the body is great. Because it really feels like human. Uh, like, uh, what I mean is... Uh, he, he puts a little fat on the body. And it makes it look cool. Like... He doesn't completely superhero it out where it's just um, like a stylistic representation of it. I mean, you can see he's got like a little bit of a belly the way that he did the um, things. But it makes it look good. So he keeps him a little wider in the um, abdomen and hip area. And then this guy's a little more lean. It's, I always love when they turn the fist like that. It's like out and away and then back at us. And the feet position are really, really cool too. A lot of times with his covers, I notice he doesn't really put backgrounds. There's a lot of his covers that have this kind of vibe. This is cool. And this is probably Morales again. Siege. I know for a fact I have more of his Thor stuff. Well, well some will pop up in here, but yeah, I don't know what is going on with that. Let me try to find it. Scans provided by the artist choice. Whatever. <laughs> Just kidding. It's a nice Spidey. This is cool. Look at him. He's like, yo, what's up? I'm badass because I got three earrings. If you go far enough, far enough back with Olivier's stuff, you'll see uh, more of a Bacalo influence. Like, there's a little bit right here, but oh, like maybe a year or so before that, he had a lot of Bacalo in his stuff. But you can still kind of see it carrying over here. And I could see where someone said that sometimes they confuse Quaypel with uh, Jimmy Chung. That probably would be the era of the stuff that you're referring to. And again, this is his uh, more Travisy stuff. It's really cool. Tried to grab some interesting pieces again. This is very, very Travisy. Even the crops, like with the legs and stuff like that, and all this, it's like these guys really studied it hard. Again, very Travisy. This is 2009. Hmm. This is cool. Boom. Man, the lighting on that is so dramatic. That's really cool. He would put so much more detail now. It's funny. Oh, yeah. These were nice. I saw these in... Uh, is this? This is McNiven. All right. Never mind. It was in the Koi Pell folder, but this is McNiven for sure. At some point, I might do a McNiven one. We'll see. That's really cool. Oh, sorry, I'm supposed to explain when I say that's really cool. Generally, like I said, it's a, it's a level of, um, it's a, a nice composition. Things are placed well. It's a, a well-executed drawing, and then it's lit well. 
again, you can look at the small read. It's just they're solid pieces through and through. It's it, a good drawing will look great up close and will also look good far away. This hammer, the way that he rendered it, the lighting on all this is just really, really great. These pages are so nice. This is such a great story, too. This looks more Bacalo with a little bit of the Travis Rocks. <laughs> it's funny how identifiable Travis was. He was such a wacky artist. He was so damn good, but he just he had Travisisms in the isms. I don't think this is him either. Yeah, sorry. They were just in the folder. This is definitely Koipel. This is such a great page. But the thing is, is Koipel, when Koipel does himself too, he's got a whole other catalog of awesomeness that Travis wouldn't do. This is great, you know, and this is all Koipel. This is all Koipel. It's like, he's a great storyteller. I mentioned it a few times in the video, and this is awesome. This is such a kick-ass piece. Um, and this is Justin Ponsner who passed away. He was a Wildstorm colorist, went to Marvel when uh, they all, or I think he went to CrossGen and then Marvel. Um, but uh, yeah, this is just amazing. Colors are great, but man. Koi Pell is just that awesome storyteller. I really, really enjoy his comic stories. Yeah, I always love this piece. Man, it's so good. This is probably somewhere between eight and fourteen thousand dollar original. Maybe, maybe, maybe twelve, twelve k. This is nice. Yeah, it's really, really cool. When he inks himself, man, it just looks so damn good. He's got it. And I, I think the, the video that I uploaded didn't have it. So Quaypel broke in about 23 years ago, somewhere around there, 23, 25 years ago. The first time I saw his work was on Legion or Legion Lost for DC. He was at DC for about three or three to five years and then went over to Marvel. And he's been at Marvel really ever since. Um... He visited Wildstorm one time. He came in one time, uh, maybe in like 2010, and I didn't really get to talk to him much. I, I maybe said hello, but um, it's about. I think I've met him maybe one time at a con, but I don't really know him. I don't know him. This is cool. He did a series of pieces around this time that we're on. This is from Quan site. So quanchang.com, if you're interested in looking at the original art, this is awesome. This might have been, this was in the other scans I did, so we'll skip this. This was not, though. There was a folder that I found that had pages that weren't in the other one. And I'm still missing at least two huge folders of Koi Pell stuff. I found other stuff, but I know for a fact I have a huge thing of black and white magic order files. I just could not find it. This is cool. This is his pencils. And this is a little bit older. I think this stuff might have been never inked. But you can see the style is a little different. He still draws so good, though. These figures are all awesome. And I mean, just look at the dynamics like this the bottom of the feet and this leg going this way. And uh, he's just, he's really mastered these core shapes. And then you can overlap them. And if you know how anatomy moves, you know, what the um, sort of, uh, what would you call it, range of motion that a joint has, you can really play it up and stretch, stretch things and squish them. Um, and uh, that's when you can really play with your art. But you need to learn those mechanics first and your fundamentals. So check out my Patreon for that, because I go over that stuff ad nauseum, grinding it into people's heads. But you'll all thank me later when you're rock solid artists. I'm almost cursed. I'm trying to avoid it in the videos so I don't get demonetized. YouTube just changed their policies again. They present it as you're gonna you're gonna have more revenue because it's gonna be more specific. It's a lie. <laughs> This is such a great piece. Man, there's a lot of panels on this, too. Or whatever you want to call it. Like, a lot of drawings. That is so kick-ass. That is great. This is amazing. 
It looks like it wasn't finished yet. Unless it's a stat. Could be a stat. Let's see. No. Unless it's from another page. I don't think he would... As much as he drew on this, you might as well draw that face. There's not that much work involved in doing it. But yeah, this is great. Let's look at the layout really quick. So... See, he's got this really great, like, you see this a lot with uh, Kirby and a lot of the people I'm pointing out. They'll create these loops. So there's this beautiful loop that's right here that immediately takes you this. But he creates these shapes that pulls you up into here, and he's directing you with this horn up to this. This points you down here. I mean, this is all very, very calculated, but but it's, it's intuitive and, and the, at the same time, meaning he doesn't have to sit and think about it. I don't have to sit and think about it because I always play with shapes and I'm always directing I with shapes. And if my shapes that I have to use don't take you there, then I'll spot black in a way and create lighting that will do the job. So either way, I'm going to use the objects that I have to draw or I'm going to use lighting. And those two things are going to push you through the page. And look, he does it right here. All this detail... It, it, he's sending you right through here and then he sweeps you around with these fists that push you up and this is just a little sort of almost like added bonus in a weird way <clears throat> I think with um, it would be a little bit framed here and he's got enough black on it that probably will pull your eye but yeah I mean honestly you, you almost don't even really visit this character but he is facing forward he or she I guess it's a he um, so that that'll make you stop on stuff. I've talked about that before, but circles that are just like not an ellipse, but an actual circle will make you stop. It's just like a round object. Your eye will go to it and it just sits there. If you have speed lines coming out of it, it'll send you out. But something like this, you're going to stop on for a moment. But all this other stuff moves you right through. So, okay, that's bizarre. I've never seen this piece before, although I saved this JPEG, but that is weird. <laughs> this was probably penciled for someone else to ink, because I don't think he does his uh, pencils that tight for himself. In fact, I really doubt it. This is great. It's interesting in this era of stuff, he was getting a tiny bit of, like, not photorealism, but close. But some of this stuff looks like it was referenced, and then other stuff doesn't. I notice it with um, certain characters that he draws that, like, it just isn't, like, his style. And so, um, you know, it's not a big deal, but it is noticeable that he drifts in and out of, like, two deliveries for stuff. Like, this is, like, him drawing this probably is too, but it kind of doesn't look like it. The horse looks referenced. This looks like maybe it was referenced. It's not a big deal. I'm just saying. You can see it more on some of the other things. See, like this. He, he might have drawn it. And this looks more like out of his head. This looks more out of his head. This is cool. Man, what a great gesture. That's awesome. These cars are really cool, too. This is nice. That's really cool. Man, what a great drawing. Oh, and here's that one thing. So I have no idea where I got these scans of the pencils. I can't remember. So this is a nice treat. This stuff might be hard to find online. The ladies. The ladies. And this all looks like his stuff. Like, these look like Quaypel drawings to me. Wow, this is awesome. This will get you going, man. You do enough pieces like this, you'll be drawing. You'll be drawing really good. Because this is a lot of work. You do 10 of these in a couple of months, you will improve 100% just based on miles on your uh, drawings. That's really good. Oh, is that it? Okay. All right. So that's it for today. And uh, have a good one. And I will talk to you guys tomorrow. And please uh, check out Patreon. I think you'll enjoy it. There's a lot of stuff there. Hundreds and hundreds of videos. All right, later.